And Gerald Salente is one of the leading, if not the leading, uh, long-term trend forecasters. And he said early last year, he said by the end of 2010, the U.S. will be technically bankrupt and will be in a depression. Now, most of the other economists and analysts we interviewed at that time said, yes, we are now at the point of no return. The dollar has been devalued. Commodities are going up. We never left the recession. We're in a depression. But we're now under 21st century mind control where they tell us the economy's rebounded and is great, even though S&P has come out and said that it's a negative out outlook on the U.S. keeping its credit rating will basically become like a third world nation. The Chinese are dumping the dollar at record rates. Uh, the Saudis know they've been double-crossed with the attempted military overthrow by the globalists there and surrounding them. So they've said that demand is low, so they're cutting production when demand's at an all-time high. Uh, there's no doubt we're in the first stages of a serious economic depression, and Gerald Salente was right. But it's just like people send me emails and media makes jokes. Jones says, buy gold. What a kook. They actually say this. He first said buy it at 260 now it's 1510 bucks. He said buy silver when it was 5 now it's 46 plus. It's like saying, "Man, this guy, you know, told you your house was on fire and it was on fire. He's a nut." I mean, we've entered a la la land world where they tell us the war in Libya isn't a war, ground troops on the ground isn't a ground war, and there won't be a ground war, though they say it's a ground war, but it isn't a ground war. Uh, they've raised the radiation levels between 1,000 to 100,000 times what they say was safe previously because we have over 500 times safe levels in cesium, cesium, and radioactive iodine-131. We are now entering a la-la land Orwellville that, that is so bizarre where they knowingly think the public's dumbed down and continue to tell us that up is down, down is up, black is white. Gerald Salente, how do you quantify what's happening? A civilization gone crazy? I say everything is the, it's the presidential reality show. Uh, people have lost their minds. They, they, they become prescription drug addicted and fast food fattened. America doesn't have a fight anymore. As I mentioned to you, you know, people say, oh, you're a gloom and doomer. I had came out with Trends 2000, my book, uh, back in uh, what, 1997, a Warner book. And I was so optimistic about the nation. You know, people were talking about moving forward in positive ways. And as you said, you know, up is down and down is up. Uh, they don't call a war in, in Libya a war. It's what, a, a time-limited, scope-limited action. The UK is now sending over, quote, advisors. And Italy and France officers you know what am i six years old and I'm they were already the there city. months ago they were there before it started well i know but now they're admitting it but they're, but they're putting these white shoe boy names on them you know advisors yes what they call the vietnam war hey remember K korean war that was a police action you know nothing's really changed it's only getting worse and as you're talking about the economy you know i, I read something from jim sinclair he really put it well he said something to the effect of Orwell's 1984, you know, how they used to keep blasting out these messages and putting them on the big screen. He said, now, you know, the, the business networks are the 1984 putting out the propaganda. And that's all it is. It's more propaganda on top of all propaganda. Uh, they, they won't call a spade a spade. Everybody knows that the only reason that this economy is keeping up at any level at all is because of all the digital money that they've dumped into the system, the trillions. Look what gold is doing. You mentioned I, I called gold at 275. You called it at 260. And look where it is now. Oh, and by the way, here's one for you. Go to Forbes magazine. They did a big story on me. You know what they called it? They called it something about doomsayers of forecasting. And we had forecast at that time gold was around $720 an ounce. They interviewed my assistant, who when she came to work from us, for us, her bond company went bust. She cashed out all her 401ks and put it into gold. And then, now remember, gold is about 725 at the time. It's more than doubled since then a few years ago. Exactly. So now they write this. Well, you know, Salenti's a doom and gloomer, and gold could go down 
as easily go down below five. No, that's what I'm saying. We're bad because we're right. So now we contacted these little weasels that Forbes, this guy would be nothing if his daddy didn't have any money, right? Now, you know, he's the big mouth out there. Do you know they won't even write a retraction? They won't even say that we're right. After they took a cheap shot at me, that flabbermouth out there is all over the place. Salenti was right. Forbes was wrong. And they won't give you any credit for it. Well, but they also run around. Off, they also run around. They pounce on you, as you know. Well, they also run around and say that uh, you're wrong about saying we're in a depression. By every yardstick, what, three quarters? Oh, yeah. Three well, quarters of, of uh, no growth uh, and, and a few other indicators is a depression. We're now, with Cook Books, several years into no growth with the debt spiraling out of control. If this isn't a depression, with half the restaurants I used to go to being closed where I live, commercial real estate going under, uh, the news coming out that, uh, private real estate, home real estate is still plunging, and they tell us that's great. Look, look at the numbers. Home real estate values are down to worse than Great Depression levels. How's that for a Depression era level? Go to John Williams' shadow statistics. Look up the unemployment rate. It's around 22 percent. Here, try this one on, Alex. Yeah, there's a recovery. You know where the recovery is coming from? 10% of the population in the United States owns 90% of all the stocks, all the bonds, all the mutual funds. 5% own 63% of everything. No, there's not a depression. Oh, in the meanwhile out there, everybody's wages have declined. Oh, but there's not inflation out there. Oh, no, they cook those numbers, too. Of course, there's a depression going on. People are losing everything. All right, I want to go back because you can always remember what journal, what date. and People can go to uh, your website and uh, pull it up and see it for themselves. But I remember over a year ago, because it was early 2010, uh, you said it's going to be clear that it's a depression by the end of the year. And it's clear uh, a few months ago. And you said there's going to be war, and it's going to be in the Middle East, it's going to be in Central Asia, and you absolutely called it. What journal was that? So people that, can go to Trends Research. The, the Spring 2010 Trends Journal, it was the Great War. And then this past autumn, we came out with Off With Their Heads 2.0. And the Trends Journal, that just came out yesterday, the whole issue is devoted to the first great war of the 21st century. You put all the pieces together, Alex, when you're talking about the police state we're living in, because they know it's happening. It's out of control, and the last thing they're going to do is to control us. That's all the plan. They Look, Libya is not a one-off. Tunisia, Egypt, Bahrain, Yemen, Algeria, Morocco, Syria, Jordan. How did you know? And how did you know? Because the whole, you know how I knew? For the same reason Bernie Madoff knew. Bernie Madoff did an interview recently, and he said what we've been saying all along. It's nothing more than one big Ponzi scheme. When they came out with the TARP bailouts in 2008, we sent out a trend alert, and we said in that trend alert, that when all else fails, they take you to war. That's what's going on. They can't bail out any more European banks. Oh, and by the way, this hardly made the news. As you know, Finland just voted in a new party. They're not going to be party to the bailouts. If all the European nations, the EMU nations, don't go into the bailouts, it doesn't happen. Where are they? What's a bailout, by the way? Oh, here's a bailout for you. What bailout? How about bailing in? They give you more debt. They cannot, they cannot handle the debt. Well, load. the bankers get the money, and then we get to pay them interest for the right to give them money. That's how sick this is. The Wall Street Journal reports today a 77% profit in 2010 for General Electric, who basically runs the White House Economic Council and paid zero corporate tax, ladies and gentlemen, and it's GE 
and their um, uh, MSNBC scapegoating the middle class, Alex Jones, Gerald Salente, you know, doctors, lawyers, uh, professors. Uh, we're being scapegoated and told we've got to pay more to, quote, fix the debt, but the money that we pay goes right to the bankers. Exactly, and that's why we came off with that with, with the off with their heads trends journal. And that's what's going on in Europe. The only reason why Europe hasn't imploded yet, like the Middle East, is because there in the Middle East, people have their autocrats, the monarchs, the dictators. In, in Europe, they're still living under the illusion that they have a democracy. So like in Ireland, they just put in another criminal group to replace the other criminal group. They're still living under the illusion that you can change it in the ballot box. And let me stop you. The system knows the illusion is wearing thin. And so now everything we've told people about, because it was public, is now being announced. Not just Apple, all smartphones under federal law, Telecommunications Act of 96, track you in real time, upload your location, give them all your data, police all over the country, uh, have wireless systems with back doors, they don't even hack it, that get into your phone and steal everything off of it. They're just doing it. They pull you over for speeding, grab your phone without a warrant, plug it in, steal your data, TSA doing the same thing when you try to fly, steal your laptop data. I mean, they are so... Criminal, Gerald. And you go back last year, Bloomberg reports, 11 years ago, secret deal signed, Veterans Affairs, with the big insurance companies to secretly steal the life insurance money of World War III vets through current vets. I mean, to even get my mind around how unbelievably criminal they are and that they've been authorized to do it, it staggers the imagination that they're going for broke. They've committed so many crimes, Gerald, they're not going to stop. Alex, you know that I was one of the first people when they started all these bailouts under Bush and then continued under Obama and they called it socialism and Marxism. I said, no, it's not. It's fascism. Fascism has come to America. The merger of state and corporate powers. You just talked about GE. Do you have to go any further than that? You could keep going down the line. You're talking about all the apps and everything else with how the, the companies are all working in tandem together to rob us. Fascism has come to America. Here, try this one on. I unilaterally decided that our core interests and that of our allies are at stake. So we're going to bomb Libya. Whatever happened to we the people? That's a really, you know, an arcane concept. Whatever happened to Congress is illegal. Exactly. But they're I'm saying it's gone. It's over. And that's what the, our issue is. The first great war. And what we're telling people to do is to pre prepare, survive, and prevail. Because people better grow up here. The game is over. Here's a good one for you. Today, Hillary Clinton. Gerald, stay there. You know what? I know you've got other interviews probably coming up, and you've agreed to five minutes to the next hour, but this is too powerful today having you on for just 30. Uh, I'll just ask live on air. I don't know. Can, can you do 20 minutes, 30 into the next hour, or you got to go in? It's impossible. I could do a couple of minutes into it, but I have another one coming up. I understand. We'll have to get you back very soon because you're. it, it, it is. We have to admit it's over. Stay there. When we come back, we'll break it down, and the show will be over. Gerald Salente will be with us five minutes into the next hour, then we'll go to retransmission. If your station doesn't carry the first five-minute segment, go to Infowars.com to listen. Um, this is a quote by Cicero over 2,040 years ago. A nation can survive its fools and even the ambitious, but it cannot survive treason from within. An enemy at the gates is less formidable for he is known and carries his banner openly. But the traitor moves amongst those within the gate freely. His sly whispers rustling through all the alleys, NPR or the snake voices, heard in the very halls of government itself. For the traitor appears not a traitor. He speaks in accents familiar to his victims, and he wears their face and their arguments. 
He appeals to the baseness that lies deep in the hearts of all men. He rots the soul of a nation. He works secretly and unknown in the night to undermine the pillars of the city. He infects the body politic so that it no longer can resist. A murderer is less to fear. The traitor is the plague. Cicero, who of course was killed uh, after Caesar was killed for uh, basically going along with not wanting a tyrant. Uh, so that's a Cicero Roman Empire more than 2,000 years ago. And it's true. The traitor is the plague. Is it not, Gerald Salente? Look what they're doing. They, they're now they're, guy, they're putting the guise of war as humanitarian missions. Uh, you know, at least Bush called it a preemptive uh, uh, issue. They're, now they're, they're taking us to war under the guise of humanitarian, and they're using that again as part of the nomenclature. And it's, it's, ex it's exactly right. The traitors are amongst us. And, and the people, they, again, the people have lost the fight in this country. You know, I just read an article about um, in Ohio, for example, there are more kids dying from uh, overdosing on, on prescription drug painkillers than than, than auto accidents, a drunk driving, you know, so that the whole morality of the nation is being rotted out. I was mentioning before the break about what I read today, Hillary Clinton chastising Gaddafi for using, allegedly using cluster bombs. And I said to myself, wow, that's interesting. How about all that depleted uranium the United States dumped all over Iraq? Oh, that's okay. And now Libya. Oh, oh, yeah. And how about Israel, you know, bombing Lebanon with cluster bombs? Oh, not a peep about that. You know, so they have. Oh, and how about those predator drones? Listen, Gaddafi's a rookie. I mean, he should be picking up America's atrocities. Could you imagine if they had a, a Abu Ghraib in, in, in Libya, how they would be talking about that? And the mainstream media, you know what I've come up with a name for them. They're nothing more than prostitutes. They're whores for the people in power. It's the revolving door. You, got, you have this guy, Carney, James Carney, the, the White House spokesperson. Hey, where did he come from? He's Time Magazine. He couldn't have been a Yaley, could he? You really you mean Harvard, Princeton, Yale, bullets, bombs, and banks? So the whole thing, Alex, it is a world order, and all you have to do to see the proof is to see who took most of the money from the Fed discount window. Foreign banks. What's Fed money going to bail out foreign banks? $20 trillion worth of back-end deals on the other end, going to Bank of Scotland, Japan, to the, to, to the Deutsche Bank, on and on. So anybody that I, you know, I used to say, ah, this new world order, come on. The golden rule, those who have the gold rule, and the gold is coming out of our pockets, stealing, stealing, stole by the Fed, and spread over to the other world banks that are running the show. Well said. Let's continue for five more minutes with Gerald Salente. Stay with us, InfoWars.com. We've got five minutes left with Gerald Salente, and the point he made is the point I'm trying to get home. Admit we have a criminal government. Doesn't mean all the cops are criminal, the school teachers, even the bureaucrats. The system is unequitable. It's designed to bring in tyranny, and it's a bunch of insiders who got their people into the bureaucracy in the last hundred years, who have sold us out to foreign banks, and they uh, have a religion. I mean, the globalists admit that they're post-industrializing us for our own good. They're making us poor for our own good, but then they're going to live like kings. And they are going after our First Amendment, everything. And uh, people listening out there, uh, you were getting into your research. They now admit this whole world government, Gerald. You were elaborating on the fact that this is a world government. Uh, looking forward into the future, not just the near future, but out from that, how do you see this ending? Because now the rats are starting to leave the sinking ship. We're now seeing uh, you know, globalists like uh, Newt Gingrich saying, get rid of Bernanke. We're now, we're now seeing polls showing the majority of people want to get rid of the Fed. Uh, looks like this ruling class that controls the political class of whores is in trouble. Well, it, to an extent. But remember, you know, the, the game is rigged and they're running the game. 
I mean, to me, the only outside shot is a Ron Paul. And, you know, I was on, uh, I, I, he's one of my the people I like to be on a lot with is uh, Judge Andrew Napolitano and on Fox. And he told me one of the most successful shows he had was when he had Ron Paul and Ralph Nader on, uh, talking about a progressive libertarian party. Progressive in the terms of foods, like you mentioned, e-foods, and their clean food. And by the way, you know, I, I coined that term clean food in 1993. So yeah, I'm concerned about what I eat. You know, I'm concerned about the environment and the water. And yet I'm, and I'm with Ron Paul on the other end. I don't want my money going overseas. You know, I love this Hillary Clinton. She's a real sport with our dough. She just told Japan, we'll, we'll help them out too. They go around and give our money to everybody. We just gave Israel some more money for their missile defense system. I'm sick and tired of these people telling me where my money has to go. By the way, so they're going to make the Japanese people pay for Tokyo Electric and General Electric, even though the General Electric's own engineers quit 30-something years ago when they built those. So General Electric, Tokyo Electric, they don't have to pay nothing. The Japanese people, they're going to pay. And will pay because she's already donated some of our money. So what I'm saying is that the only way out to answer your question to me is a, th a third party. Because this, we don't have, this isn't democracy in America. You know, they don't represent us. And you talk about the cops, you know, two weeks ago I got two tickets, one on a Saturday night and one on a Sunday. And, and yeah, his kid, you know, he was groomed to be a perfect young Nazi, you know. Oh, no, they're crawling people. all over everything but then won't respond to real crime now. Exactly. So they have become the, the police have become the enforcers for the crime bosses. You haven't seen one head roll on Wall Street. So what I say to the police, and I know I know a number of them, do what's right morally, not what your corrupt boss who's tied into the politicians is telling you to do to bring more revenue in because taxes are going down. Do what's right morally. And to me, Alex, that's the only way out of all of these problems. Well, no amount of taxes. I mean, just a few years ago, I'd drive to work and I'd see five cops. Now I might see 20. I mean, they are feeding on us and they're pulling people over for going one mile over the speed limit now. I know. I, I'm saying, you know, I, I don't want to go out at night anymore. You know, I have one drink and I only, you know, will they be after me? You know, meanwhile, as I said, the real criminals, like try Congress, they get off with a slap. How about that guy, Charlie Wrangler? Remember him? Yeah. The, yeah, remember all the stuff that he got caught doing? How about all these people like Daschle and, and Geithner who never pay their taxes? Oh, they get caught. They say, oh, you know, I made a mistake. You or I get caught. Boy, we're doing hard time for a long time. Yeah, so, Gerald, again, give us your website. It's asked, we need a new third party. Give folks your website again. Trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com. And we just came out yesterday with the spring issue. It's one that you shouldn't miss. It's a collector's piece. All right, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you so much.